Hello IB students, today we'll be solving the Physics SL Paper 2 2021. I'll go through step-by-step -step solutions that's going to help you understand the physics better. Without further ado, smash that subscribe button and let's get started. Question 1. A ball of mass 0 0.250 kilograms is released from rest at time t equals 0 from a height h above a horizontal floor. The graph shows the variation with time of the velocity v of the ball. Air resistance is negligible. Take g as minus 9.80. The ball reaches the floor after one second. Determine h. So the question is, the ball, it falls from rest and takes one second before it hits the floor. We are supposed to find the height. One way to solve this problem is to use a relevant SUVAT equation. We are interested in finding the displacement we know the acceleration, we know the time, we also know the initial velocity, which is zero. Why is u equal zero? It's because the object falls from rest. So this combination screams that we should use this equation, s equals ut plus one half a t square. Well, if u is zero, this term goes away. Now I can plug in the value of the acceleration which is minus 9.80 and time which is 1.0 second. If I do that and plug all these values into this equation, I get S equals half negative 9.80 times 1 square. When we do the calculation, S is going to turn out to be minus 4.90 meters. Now that's the displacement. We just want the height. The height, therefore, is 4.9 meters. And that solves the first part of the problem. Let's move on to the next one. Label the time and velocity graph using the letter M, the point where the ball reaches the maximum rebound height. If you go back to the plot, we are supposed to find the point where the ball reaches its maximum rebound height. So the ball falls onto the floor and rebounds and goes up. We have to pinpoint the point where it shows that the ball has reached its maximum height. Well, let's try and understand this graph. Initially, the ball is at rest, so the velocity, initial velocity is zero. That is shown by this point over here. What happens next is the ball begins to fall, so its velocity decreases, meaning that its velocity becomes more and more negative because it's falling in the negative direction. That is shown by this graph, an increasing negative value. What happens next is the ball strikes the ground and becomes squashed and its velocity becomes zero. That is shown by this point over here. The velocity shoots up and the ball comes to rest. Since it's squashed, the restoring forces push off, leading the ball to increase its velocity in the positive direction. And as that happens, the ball begins to lose contact with the ground. That is shown by this point over here. The ball leaves the contact with an upward velocity of 5 meters per second. What happens next? The ball continues to go up and its velocity begins to decrease. That is shown by this graph over here. When it's at its maximum height, its velocity has again become zero. That is shown by this point over here. So this is the point where the velocity is zero, meaning the ball has ascended to its maximum rebound height. This turns out to be 1.6 second. And that's the point we were after. The next part of the question says, state the acceleration of the ball at the maximum rebound height. The ball is at its maximum rebound height the only force acting on it is gravity, trying to pull it down, trying to pull it down. And if, and if the only force acting on it is gravity, the acceleration should be acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.80 meters per second square. Meters per second square. All right, let's move on to the third part of the problem. Draw on the axis a graph to show the variation with time of the height of the ball from the instant it rebounds from the floor until the instant it reaches the maximum rebound height. No numbers are required on the axis. 
So on this height versus time graph, we have to show how the height varies with time. Height varies with time. Well, initially when the ball rebounds, it goes off with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. So there must be a slope to the graph, all right? Because the slope of height versus time must give us the velocity. And the initial velocity after rebound is 5 meters per second. What happens next as the ball climbs up is that its velocity begins to fall. At the maximum height, its velocity is zero. So the graph should curve like this. The flat line over here, the slope of this line is zero. This tells us that the velocity at the top is zero and there's a decent slope initially. That is the initial velocity of five meters per second. And that solves this part of the problem. Part C of the problem wants us to estimate the loss in the mechanical energy of the ball as a result of the collision with the floor. All right, let's go back to the graph. Let's find the velocity before the ball hits the floor. In order to find the velocity, we'll use V equals U plus AT. Initial velocity is zero, so that goes away. So the velocity will turn out to be A times T. The acceleration is negative 9.80 and the time is one second. This means the velocity before it hits the ground is negative 9.8. We can also read that off from the graph. It's right over here, just above minus 10. Now this is the velocity before collision. So let's call that VB. What's the velocity after it collides and moves up? We can read it off from here. It's five meters per second. So velocity after the rebound is five meters per second. Now we can use these two velocities to compute the change in mechanical energy. Change in mechanical energy is equal to kinetic final plus potential final minus kinetic initial plus potential initial. Well, initial potential and final potential both are zero. Why? Because when the object is just about to hit the floor, the height is zero, meaning initial potential is zero. And when it rebounds, just after the rebound, the height is still zero. So the final potential is zero. So I can remove both of the potential terms. And the equation simplifies to kinetic final minus potential final. And I can use these two velocities to compute the kinetic energies. Let's find the final kinetic. It would be half mass of the object, velocity after the collision, velocity after square minus half mass of the object, velocity before the collision. So that's Vb square. So this I can simplify as half m Va square minus Vb square. Now it's time to put in the values of Va, Vb, and mass of the object. The mass of the object is 0 0.250 kilograms. So let's place that value here. That's half 0 0.250 times 5 square minus minus 9.8 square. Let's plug this into a calculator and our calculator spits out a value of 8.9 joules. And that's all this part of the problem. Next up, determine the average force exerted on the floor by the ball. Let's make a quick sketch of the problem. This is the floor and here is the ball just before it's about to hit the ground. It's moving with a velocity of negative 9.8 meter per second. When it rebounds, it's moving upwards with a velocity of 5 meters per second. Let's first of all figure out the change in momentum. The change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum. Final momentum would be mass times velocity. That's 5 minus initial momentum is the mass of the object times its velocity, which is minus 9.8. This means the change in momentum is 5m plus 9.8m. That will turn out to be 14.8m. The mass of the object is 0 0.25. So let's plug in here. We get 14.8 times 0 0.250, which is 3.7. So the change in momentum of the object is 3.7. But what's the time during which this change took place? 
To figure that out, we need to go back to the graph. If we do that, we realize that the momentum change takes place from here to here. And the time span is just 0 0.1 second. So the change in momentum that we calculated took place in 0 0.1 seconds. So that means the change in time is 0 0.1 second. From Newton's law, we know that the average force exerted on an object equals the change in momentum divided by the time it took for the change. Change in momentum is 3.7 and the time is 0 0.1. This means that the average force exerted is 37 newtons. So 37 newtons of average force were exerted on the ball. But we must also realize that there are two forces acting on the ball as it hits the ground. One is the force of gravity, mg, and the other is the normal force. All right. The average force, therefore, can be written as the normal force minus mg, that's the total average force. And this we found out to be 37 newtons. So the normal force exerted is 37 plus mg. This would be 37 plus mass of the object, 0 0.250 times 9.8, which will turn out to be 39.5 newtons. So the ground is exerting an average force upward of 39.5 newtons. By Newton's third law, the ball has to exert a similar force downwards on the floor. So this is the exact force we're trying to look for. 39.5 Newtons is the average force the ball exerts on the floor. And that completes this problem.